نحمد رسول کریم الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ربشلی سودری و یسلی عمری واہل العقدم ملسانی یفقہ قولی وجعلی وزیر من اخلی اللہ فقی ناف الدین رب زدنی علما اللہ انی اس الکا علم ناف رسکن تو بن و امل متقبلا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ سورہ جمعہ The surah was revealed in Medina with 11 verses, two stanzas, 62nd by the order of arrangement and 110th by the order of revolution. The name of the surah, it gets from the verse number 9 where Allah says, Iza nudiya li salati min yawmil juma. That when you are being proclaimed and you've been called towards your juma congregational salah. So it is, um, it is a title of the subject matter as a whole, and it's also, it's not just a symbolic title. The period of the revolution of the first section, that is from the verse number one to eight, it is in 7 AH, that is on the occasion of the conquest of Khaybar or soon after it, because uh, it has been reported regarding these verses, it has been reported that Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who reports that these verses were revealed to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his presence. And we learn from traditions that Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who he had accepted Islam after the Treaty of Hadebiya and after, uh, uh, during 7 AH. And the second section, which is from 9th uh, to the 11th verse, it was sent down shortly after the emigration of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Mecca to Medina. And he had established the Friday congregational prayer on the fifth day after his arrival in Medina. And there, these verses were revealed. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yusabbihu lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fil ardil. وما في الارض الملك القدوس العزيز الحكيم هو الذي بعث في الاميين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم اياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمه وان كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth is exalting allah the sovereign the pure, the exalted in might, the wise. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa allahu akbar, rabbi aini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. It is he who has sent among the unlettered a messenger from themselves, reciting to them his verses and purifying them and teaching them and teaching them the book and wisdom, although they were before in clear error. So it is these verses of um, Surah, of, uh, Surah Al-Jumma. They've also been uh, revealed in other Surahs of Quran. They've been revealed twice, similar words, and a similar message has been conveyed with two Surahs, in, uh, uh, with two verses in Surah Al-Baqarah and a verse in uh, Surah Al-Imran. And these verses, all these four verses convey the four steps of a highly effective and a very effective and a potential uh, source of teaching and four steps of teaching and preaching of the messages and commandments of Quran, which were carried on by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And to others of them who have not yet joined them, and he is exalted in might the wise. <clears throat> That is the bounty of Allah, which he gives to whom he wills. And Allah is the possessor of great bounty. The example of those who were entrusted with Torah, then did not take it on is like that of donkey who carries volumes of book. Wretched is the example of the people who deny the signs of Allah and Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. 
Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. Allahumma inni as'alukal huda wa tuka wal athafa wal ghina. Allahumma, Allahumma anfa'ni bima alamtani wa alimni ma yanfa'ni wa zidni ilma. A'uzu billahi an akuna minal jahileen. Say, O oh, you who are Jews, if you claim that you are the allies of Allah, excluding the other people, then wish for death if you should be truthful, but they will not wish for it ever because of what their hands have put forth, and Allah is knowing of the wrongdoers. Say, indeed, the death from which you flee, indeed, it will meet you. Allahumma a'inni ala ghamaratil maut wa sakaratil maut. Then you will be returned to the knower of the unseen and the witness, and he will inform you about what you used to do. And O oh, you who have believed, when the adhan is called for the prayer of the day of Juma, then proceed to the remembrance of Allah and leave the trade that is better for you if you only knew. And when the prayer has been concluded, disperse within the land and seek from the bounty of Allah and remember Allah often that you may succeed. <coughs> so in the verse 9 and 10 of Surah al Juma, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the basic commandments and orders regarding the congregational salah of Juma. And uh, the detail of all the information and orders we do gather from the traditions of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Juma is basically an Islamic uh, term. In the pre-Islamic days of ignorance, the Arabs used to call Friday as Aruba. It was only uh, started, the, it was only the Muslims who started calling it as the day of Juma on account of the congregation and the gathering, a bigger gathering on that day. Uh, there are similar days specified for the Jews, it was the day was fixed as Saturday, the Sabd, and for Christians, the specified day of uh, worship has been uh, fixed as Sunday. For us, as compared to the Jews and the Christians, for the followers of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the commandments of the congregational Salah of Friday, the time limit is like very short. For Jews, we realize and we learn from traditions and from the verses of Quran also that they were supposed to specify the whole of the Saturday for worship and they were not supposed to do any form of worldly activities, may they be business, trade or anything of the sort. But for us, they are like what? If we carry on all the sunnahs of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we listen to the sermon and we offer the two, uh, two rakat of the congregational salah, that would take maximum, like what? It would be maximum about one and a half to two hours and that would be all. And we would be be dutiful and we would be paying all the obligatory duty of the congregational salah of Juma also. So the order of Friday is much more easier as compared to those orders which were issued to the people of uh, the previous books. Now this order for Friday congregational prayer, this had been enjoined on Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before his immigration from Mecca. And uh, at that time when he was in Mecca, he obviously could not offer these congregational salah of Friday. But uh, we do learn that Hazrat Musa bin Umar, the leader of uh, the earliest immigrants, he offered the first Friday prayer at Medina with 12 people following him in this congregational salah before Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had reached Medina. And uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wants the earliest things, the earliest things which Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did after immigration to Medina was, after leaving Makkah was what? Is establishment of this congregational Salah of Friday. After leaving Mecca, he reached Quba on Monday, and there he stayed for four days. And on the fifth day, when he was proceeding towards Medina, he stopped over at Bani Salim bin Off, 
And there he, uh, this was the first congregational salah which was offered by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The time appointed by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for the Friday salah is, uh, has been explained as the time after the declining of the sun, that is after midday. And this is exactly the starting time of the Zuhr salah also. And it has been uh, confirmed by traditions that on the day of Friday, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, led the Friday congregational prayer inside of the Zohar prayer. And um, the Zohar prayer, uh, the congregational prayer of Friday, before this, there was the sermon, and this would replace the two rakat, the two uh, obligatory rakat were replaced by the sermon, and then they were offered, they offered two congregational salahs of Friday. So there was, this was the only difference between the Friday prayer and the Zohar prayer was that in Friday prayer, there were only two rakats of obligatory prayers accompanied with the Friday sermon. And in the Zohar, there are four rakats of the, of the obligatory or the first salah. Now the call of uh, the, the call for the Friday congregational salah, it was just made before the sermon in the life of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And similar was the case while in the period of Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Umar, and uh, in the period of Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and who we learned that when the population of the Muslim population of Medina increased, then two proclamations or two azans were made for the Juma congregational salah, one slightly earlier to inform the people so that they have, uh, they have been well in time, they've been reminded and they've been informed so that they can make their preparations, taking bath, uh, etc. of the sunnah. And then the last, uh, so the second uh, proclamation or adhan for the Friday congregational salah is made immediately before the sermon. So two uh, proclamations were introduced during the time of Hazrat Usman and that is exactly what we uh, do now also. And it, uh, as it has been mentioned in this verse is that you need to do what you need to hurry up and you need to go in haste. So why do we need to get to the congregational salah before the sermon, it has been reported in uh, Musnad Ahmad Bukhari and Muslim and Abu Dawud and Tirimdi Nithai, all the six books of Hadith, it has been reported by Hazrat Abu Huraira that Prophet Sallallahu said that angels on Friday go on writing down the names of the people as they arrive. And then when the Imam comes out to deliver the sermon, they stop writing the names and their attention also towards the remembrance of Salah. So if we want that our names should be entered into the register of those who are going to attend the congregational salah and this name list is going to be presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then we need to reach the mosque before when before the sermon of the Friday salah starts and then uh, Prophet sallallahu has also said that um, this, in this verse it's been said that hasten to the remembrance of Allah. So what do we mean by hastening to the remembrance of Allah does not actually imply that we need to run about and we need to like uh, reach as if we have to run and catch the salah. No, hasten to the remembrance of Allah does not mean that we need to come to the mosque running, but it means that we need to plan well in time. And we need to plan well in time to get to the mosque well in time before the sermon starts. And uh, there is an incident in the life of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which has been reported in Sahih Sitta, that <coughs> the companions report that uh, prayer had begun and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was leading the congregational salah, that uh, um, once the prayer had started, there was a loud noise and there were people running from behind. And when the prayer had concluded, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked that what was this noise about? And they replied that people were coming, running to join into the prayer. And then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave the instruction, don't do that in future. Whenever you've come for the prayer, come while you are calm and come in your dignity and uh, come while you are calm and in your dignity and join behind the imam in whatever remains of the prayer and make up whatever you have missed independently that after the salah has been concluded, if you had something left, you will complete your rakat after that. And it's been reported in Muslim and Bukhari. 
And uh, similarly, it's been reported in all the books of Sahisita that Prophet Sallallahu said that when prayer has become, one should come walking to it with calm and dignity and not running. Then one should join in whatever remains the, the prayer and should make up whatever has missed independently later on. So it means that uh, to make haste is not actually running is, but it means to make planning well in time so that we can reach on time. And uh, here in this verse, Allah has also said that leave off your trades. So it means that it includes all forms of worldly activities, may it be business, may it be agricultural activities, may it be jobs, any form buying and selling. So according to this verse, buying and selling and indulging in any form of business or trades and worldly activities is actually what it is forbidden. How important it is how important it is to join the congregational salah of Friday. It has been reported by Hazrat uh, Abdullah bin Masood Rasiallahu ta'ala and who that Prophet Sallallahu said that I feel I should ask somebody to stand in my place to lead the prayer. And I myself should go and set fire to the houses of the people who do not come for the Friday salah. It has been reported by Bukhari and Musnad Ahmad. Similarly, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who he has reported along with many other companions also that Prophet sallallahu said that people should refrain from giving up the Friday prayer. Otherwise, Allah will seal up their hearts and they will become totally heedless. This has been reported in Muslim Nisai and Musnad Ahmad. Similarly, uh, in another tradition reported by um, Hazrat, uh, Hazrat Jabir bin Abdullah and other companions, it has been reported that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that um, if uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, has the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who does not come up said that somebody who does not come up for the Friday Salah, Allah seals up the heart of that person who abandons three Friday prayers. Three consecutive Friday prayers, if left one after the other, Allah will seal up the heart of their person, provided that person has no genuine and lawful excuse. And then in another tradition, Allah, Prophet said that Allah turns the heart of such a person into the heart of a hypocrite. Allahumma tawahir qalbi min al-nafaki, Allahumma la taj'alla minhum. And then Hazrat Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he reports that Prophet said, from today till resurrection, the Friday prayer is obligatory on all of you. Allah will neither bless nor set right the condition of the one who abandons it, disregarding it, or considering it an ordinary thing. Note it well. The prayer of such a person will be no prayer at all. His zakat will be no zakat at all. His hajj will be no hajj at all. His fasting will be no fasting. And no good deed done by him will be a good deed until he repents. And then for the one who repents, Allah is no doubt what? The most forgiving. And this has been reported by Ibn Majah. Similarly, Prophet Sallallahu has been reported to tell all of us that the Friday prayer is obligatory on every person who hears, who hears the call to it. And uh, another tradition explains that he said that no, Allah has enjoined the Friday prayer as a duty to you. And he has exempted the women, children, slaves, the sick, and the travelers from this duty. Another tradition reports that Attendance at the Friday prayer is obligatory on every adult male. In other words, the Fadi say that the Friday congregational prayer is obligatory on every Muslim except the slave, women, children, and sick. That is, if there is a genuine lawful excuse, the lawful excuse may be like there may be the person may be sick or the person may be an attendant to a sick person who doesn't have any other attendant to look after the sick person, or the person uh, may be, there may be a risk of his life of or, or of his honor or of his property uh, being at risk if he comes out to leave for the congregational salah, or if there is heavy snowstorm or heavy rain and thunderstorms making it difficult for him and he doesn't have any vehicle to go on top of which to for the congregational salah, then these will be genuine lawful excuses for where he can stay back. And then we learned that a minimum of 10 
or by some, a minimum of 12 people are needed for it to be accepted as a congregational salah of uh, Friday. And we also learn, uh, learn from Hadith that if Eid, if the Eid festival falls on Friday, then the people who have performed the Eid prayer, they might be exempted from the Friday prayers. And uh, this can be, uh, this option can be taken, but if both can be easily attended to, they might be carried on also. And so here in Allah uh, has also, uh, we also learn from the words of Prophet Sallallahu how, what is the excellence and what is the reward? It has been reported by Hazrat Salman Farsi, and who in Bukhari and Muslim Ahmad, the Prophet said that Muslim who has a bath on Friday and cleans and purifies himself as far as possible, that is according to the Sunnahs of Prophet, as far as possible, and applies oil to his hair or uses a perfume. This is what this is specific for males and for men, and uses a perfume if available, and comes to the mosque and takes his place without disturbing others. And then he offers the prayer that Allah has destined for him and listens quietly when the Imam speaks. He will have his sins and errors committed since the previous Friday forgiven. SubhanAllah. This is what Allah has mentioned in Quran. In al there are certain righteous and virtuous deeds which lead to what? Which lead to forgiveness and expiation of the sins. And then it has been reported by Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas, who in Musnad Ahmad, the Prophet said that the person who speaks when the Imam is delivering the sermon is like a donkey loaded with books. And the person who tells him to keep quiet also has rendered his own prayer void. And uh, regarding the uh, sermon and the prayer of Prophet وسلم, we learn that uh, his sermon used to be shorter than the prayer. And the prayer used to be slightly longer than the sermon. And um, it has been reported that he said that prolongation of the prayer and the brevity of the sermon, they are the signs that the imam has a deep insight of religion. So um, this was what Prophet Sallallahu manner regarding uh, Friday. And this is what has been explained as the excellence of Friday congregational salah by the traditions. But when they saw a transaction, or a diversion, they rushed to it and left you standing. Say, what is with Allah is better than diversion and than a transaction, and Allah is the best of providers. Now, what was this? This was an incident in the life of Prophet after immigration on a Friday. What happened was that uh, there was a trade caravan from Syria which arrived in Medina. And the caravan arrived right at the time of the Friday. Prayer was in progress. And the, the people of the caravan, they started playing their drums to announce their arrival because this was the norm. When trade caravans, they approached the city and they landed up over there to trade with the people and to inform the people they used to play their music and play, and, uh, play their drums. So now what the state of affairs was that Prophet Sallallahu at that time was delivering the Friday sermon. Now the companions who were there in the congregational salah, they heard the drum and the people in the congregational salah, they became impatient, they became restless and they rushed towards Baki where the caravan had halted. And just only 12 men were left. And then according to some other traditions, we learn that there were just seven women and there were 12 men and they just remained behind. Like we learn the names of people who, le who were left behind. Oh, Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Usman, Hazrat Ali, Hazrat Abdullah bin Masood, Hazrat uh, Amar bin Yasir, Hazrat um, Salim and uh, Hazrat Jabir bin Abdullah. And um, so there, uh, they, these were the 12 people who remained behind, behind and then there were seven women with them also. And there, Allah, Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala addressed them and uh, warned them with this verse revealed in Surah Juma. and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi addressed them and he said, by him in whose hand is my life, if all of you had left, none had remained behind, this valley would have overflowed with fire. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us realize 
and help us relate to the importance and the excellence of the Friday Congregational Salah and help us encourage and motivate and convince our men folk never, never, ever to leave the Congregational Salah of Friday without any genuine and lawful excuse. Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi, adada khalqihi, wa rizwa nafsihi, wa zinada arshihi, wa medada kalimatihi. Rabbana, la tuzih qulubana, baada iz hadaitana wa khablana, min ladunka rahma, innaka anta al-wahab. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu alayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun, wa salamun ala al-mursaleen, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, ameen summa ameen.